Hi everybody, this is Heather from SisterWigs.com and today I'm bringing you a short, very short, hopefully, re-review of Cameron in Raspberry Ice. I had a customer order one of these and I, I'm assuming she probably ordered it based on one of my reviews, who knows. Um, and I thought to myself while I was placing her order, self, mine's kind of seen better days. I could probably stand to order another one of these. So um, I went ahead and ordered one for myself as well. And so I just took this out of the box, haven't even put it on, because I want to show you not only the Raspberry Ice color with the new camera, because it's one of my favorite of the uh, high fashion colors from the Renee of Paris, Noriko, all those kind of colors, lines. But I also want to show you some of the things that people complain about <laughs> with this wig. I mean, no, none of the people who bought it from me have complained, and I think that's because they've seen my review, so they know what it looks like and all that jazz. But I definitely want to make sure that, you know, if you watch other people's reviews and you see people complain about the cab construction or something like that about this wig, that I address those issues in this video and try to explain um, my take on them. So let me just pull up something really quick on here so I can tell you some info about this wig. Okay, so Cameron is not particularly long. She's only four inches at the nape. So she is graduated. She's longer in the front, so that's what this is, than she is in the back. And she's got all these really pretty layers in the back. And I'm telling you this before I put it on, because um, I want you to see what it looks like right out of the box. The top, how they parted it, is atrocious. And all the permatease is kind of standing up, if you can see that. Um, this is a permateased wig, okay? So it is going to need some styling in order to cover up that permatease. And in order to do that, all I really had to do was take a comb and part it to the side instead of the middle. I always recommend that if you're wearing a permateased top wig that you do not part it down the middle specifically for that reason. Because when it settles, it, it just doesn't look right. But when you part it to the side, it's not such a big deal. I mean, obviously the permatease is still there, but it's not standing up as bad. Okay, you still got a little bit, but once I wash it, those will go away. And then the the weird way that the highlights kind of like, this wig has a lot of high fashion highlights in both um, a bright coppery auburn in addition to a kind of, um, pale butterscotch blonde. Um, and so they kind of, um, they go right down the middle, like yellow, yellow, red, red, yellow, yellow. It, if you don't part it to the side, it looks skunk striped, <laughs> in my opinion. But if you part it to the side, it looks fabulous. You know, just give her a shake. And put her on. Now this cap is gonna be tight when you first put it on, but then after you wear it for a little while, it'll stretch out and it will become very, very comfortable. My my Cameron that I basically wore until the wheels fell off of it um, is exceptionally comfortable, which is why I wanted to get another one. I don't mind permatees. I don't mind it at all. Um, it doesn't really bother me. And I still get that, that thing when I tell people when I wear this wig out in public, or at least its predecessor before I re-upped, when I tell them that I have a wig on, they don't believe me. I've had professional photos taken with a camera on, and I've had um, uh, headshots taken for my academic portfolio with a camera on. Nobody can tell. I, unless, unless you're talking to another wig wearer. <laughs> Um, now, as the wig starts to age, that permatease is going to start to fail, which means that all this luscious volume in the Cameron is going to start to depuff. And when that happens, certain parts of the permatease top are going to become more exposed than they were previously because nothing's there to really prop them up. And that's really when you know you need to re-up. So let me state unequivocally the foremost thing you need to remember about Renee of Paris and Noriko wigs and that is that they are high fashion wigs, okay? Um, and, and especially with the Renee of Paris light, it says right underneath it that they are 
high fashion wigs. Um, let me see if it says it on here. Well, it just says world leader in wig fashion, but um, high fashion is a euphemism. It is not like a glowing recommendation. It's a euphemistic term used within the wig industry to kind of denote a, a type of wig that is cut to be very, very um, uh, stylish, very flattering, usually has very saturated, bright, um, very fun, kind of like salon fresh colors. So, I mean, there, there are upsides to high fashion wigs, but the downside is that they're cheap wigs. They're, they're, not, they're not like super high quality. And that's one of the reasons why I push John Renault so much because yeah, they have a high fashion line. Their illusions line is arguably a high fashion line. But for the most part, John Renault wigs are extremely high quality. And same thing with Rene of Paris, their Amour line is extremely high quality. They've got the smoothest monofilament in the Amour wigs that I've ever experienced. I just wish that the wigs, that they'd start making like a large cap. And I, I know that some of you just said amen. So, um, but you know, Cameron is very cute. The style is very, very cute. And you know, thank goodness for this white background. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and lift this up. Now, I don't think that that's problematic permatease. Sincerely. Um, at all. Like, I'm not, I'm not seeing crazy flyaways. I mean, maybe if, if there was one, just like maybe one sticking up, you could just kind of, oh, here, let me zoom back out. See, so look at the wig and not my mug. Um, you know, you could just take some embroidery shears and go, and take care of those. Just be careful and take your time and make sure that you don't snip any of the hair up here at the top. Um, but other than that, I love this wig. I love the style. I think it's very, very flattering. You know, it's one of those highly layered sort of shaggy bobs. And I think on people with round faces, you know, it looks beautiful. And it's stacked in the back and it has these really pretty layers on the top. And this color is brown. It's a brown, like a medium brown, and then it just has these really beautiful highlights. And I even dig the bang on Cameron. I mean, look how that's, that's sitting there. Usually I hate bangs, but the bang on this one is particularly pretty. So, you know, I, I'm just, I just wanted to make this video for all of you who are permatease averse or convinced that you absolutely need a monofilament hand-tied wig in order for it to look realistic. You don't. You really don't. Um, now, I'm not trying to um, persuade people who like monofilament to not stay there because, you know, I make money off those monofilament wigs. I want you to keep buying them. But um, I just want to say that if you're reluctant, you know, if you're a brand new wig buyer and you're completely scared to death about how, you know, you're going to look in certain styles, it's way easier to experiment with these less expensive styles um, and there's way less of an emotional investment. <laughs> so that's why I wanna show you as much as I could possibly show you and try to you know, assuage you of your fear of permatease because in most applications, a permatease wig is gonna be really flattering on a, a bigger girl because it's got more volume. It's got more of that you know, volume. This kind of volume, by the way, might be overwhelming on a skinny girl, but on a big girl, it's kind of nice. Um, so just keep that in mind that, you know, permatease can be your friend and that you don't need a $400 wig in order for it to convince the vast majority of people because the people who would be able to tell that you're wearing a wig will still be able to tell that you're wearing a wig even with the monofilament because they're wig wearers. I can spot a wig a mile away. I, I just know. I know when someone's wearing a lace front. I know when someone's got a mono top. And I usually know what brand, make, and model of the wig it is. But that's because I'm one of those people that I study these for a living. I, 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 know, I know what's in them. I know how they're made. I know where they're made. I know all that stuff. And, you know, I know what they're called in other countries and all that crap. And because of that, you know, 
I just know. And there are people, hobbyists, who collect these wigs and, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they have blogs online or something like that, but those people also are going to be able to tell. So don't live your life for those people because those people are probably going to wish you well. And if anything, they're probably gonna love chatting you up about wigs and, you know, sharing their love of hair and all their knowledge because that's what those people live for and that's what I live for. So, um, you know, make sure you just try to find a style that works for you, a cap that's comfortable that you don't feel like you're wearing a hot basket on your head every day, and something that makes you feel like a better version of you. And, you know, think about the cap construction as just the icing on the cake. I love this wig. This is Cameron by Renee of Paris, and uh, in the color Raspberry Ice R, which is a rooted medium brown that has pale, um, kind of like a golden butterscotchy blonde color highlight in addition to a kind of pretty coppery auburn highlight. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.